And Israel is defending itself against accusations of genocide in international court. South Africa has filed a lawsuit seeking to halt Israel's offensive in Gaza, but Israel says it's fighting a war it did not start and did not want. Meanwhile, Houthi leaders are vowing to respond after the U.S. and its allies launched large-scale retaliatory strikes against the Iran-backed rebels in Yemen. The Pentagon says the strikes come after militants repeatedly attacked commercial ships in the Red Sea and refused to heed warnings. Senior White House correspondent Selena Wang joins me now along with ABC's Patrick Rievel in Tel Aviv, Israel for more. Selena, how significant is this escalation in Yemen and what message is the U.S. sending to the Houthis? Look, the U.S. move was a big deal. These strikes were significant in their size, hitting a large number of targets, more than 60 of them. The purpose here is the U.S. wants to send a very clear and strong message to the Houthis to stop these attacks. They've also, with these strikes, trying to degrade its capabilities, its ability to continue to go after these commercial ships in the Red Sea. The goal from the U.S., Diane, is to deter and to stabilize the situation in the region. But the question is, does it and will it achieve that? The Houthis are already vowing to take revenge. The U.S. officials saying that they won't be surprised if they see some sort of response. The White House yesterday making clear to me that the U.S. will do whatever it takes in order to counter and defeat this threat from the Houthis. Look, this large-scale retaliatory strike, this is not something the U.S. wanted to do. They had sent repeated warnings to the Houthis to stop these attacks. It didn't work, so now we've seen this very strong response. The U.S. and its message making clear that this wasn't just the U.S. acting alone. It was with a coalition of international countries. The goal here to deter and not escalate. But again, the question is, can it achieve that? Patrick, Hamas and Hezbollah have condemned those strikes. So what does this mean for concerns of a wider conflict in the Middle East? Hi, Diane. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a great deal of unease and uncertainty here in the region following those strikes because, quite simply, it's clear that today we're not further away from a major escalation. We're not further away from a regional conflict following them. I mean, even U.S. allies in the region like Oman have expressed deep concern because they fear that this is potentially even playing into the hands of Iran and the Houthis. I mean, I think we have, one of the fears that many experts have is that ultimately Iran, through its, through its proxies like Hezbollah and like the Houthis, is essentially content at the moment to try and keep this conflict kind of simmering um, just below the threshold of a major, major regional war. And obviously that just leaves the situation where you can fa face potentially um, mistakes being made where you can see this boil over eventually because of miscalculations. I think people are very worried still that this could, we could still see um, this war escalate um, between Israel and Hezbollah as they continue to trade fire over the border. For now, Iran um, and, and its, and its uh, proxies like Hezbollah have said they don't want, you know, have indicated that they don't want this to get any bigger. But for, when we see these strikes, one thing we can be absolutely sure is that for now, it's not getting, the, the risk of escalation is not getting lower. All right, Senior White House Correspondent Selena Wang, Patrick Rievel in Tel Aviv. Thank you both. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.